1 to 10, and this reading is printed in your bulletins. Romans 10, 1 to 10, and this is coming from the New International Version of the Bible. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Most writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. Oh, well, let's just say, say, the word is near you. It, it is in your mouth and in your heart. Hmm. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, ye shall be saved. Let us read together. For it is with your heart that you can believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. Let us be standing as we take our hymnals and turn to hymn number 137 and sing together this great hymn of the church at the cross.
cross? Aren't you glad for the cross where Jesus died for our sins? Let us be seated. And at this time, we'll have our announcement by Sister Connie David. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, the announcements. Before I read the announcements, I do have a, a letter for the church to the West Hidesville Baptist Church. We would like to express our gratitude to the West Hidesville Baptist Church during the rental of the sanctuary for the home-going service of our sister. A special thanks to Reverend Rainsbury for being our musician and Brother Gaddy who assisted in ushering. The expressions of love that was shown to all will always be remembered. May God continue to bless the ministry of West Hidesville Baptist Church with grateful hearts, the Miller family. Um, please join Reverend Rainsbury on the Monday morning prayer line at 6.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday evening, we will resume our Bible study. So at 6.30 p.m., we will have prayer and meditation, and Bible study will begin this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, the women's ministry will be meeting on Saturday, September 10th in the Eric L. David Fellowship Hall. For additional information, please see Reverend Lynette Wright. And please remember that the appreciation service for Reverend Faye Bostic will be held on Sunday, September 25th at 10.30 a.m. And as a reminder, um, we are to still wear our mask anytime we are in this edifice, and you should cover both your nose and your mouth every, all, all, all the time while you're in the church. And as a final announcement, uh, Sister Helen Tan would like to meet with all ushers immediately following the service. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Connie. For those of you who are worshiping with us by way of Facebook, we say good morning to you. We're glad you can join us today for worship. We feel special that you've taken time out of your busy day to join us here at West Hyattsville Baptist Church. And for those of you who are worshiping by way of our live stream on our website, we say the same to you. We're so glad you're joining us this morning. And of course, our worshipers who are joining us by way of conference call, we say good morning to you as well. And to those of us in the house today, good morning, West Hyattsville. Good morning, good morning West Hyattsville. Oh, what a blessing it is to be here this morning. Don't we have a beautiful day that God has given us? We ought to be glad that we are up and about today and we're here once more in the house of worship. Let me tell you something. God is good. I think you already know that, but I just got to say, because he's been good to me this week. He's been good to you this week. I think God deserves the praise because God has been good. Amen. Amen. So while we're here today, let us enjoy this time together. Let's worship him and let's give him the praise for indeed he is worthy of all the praise. And as Sister Connie was making the announcement, again, remember that on Wednesday as we resume our Bible study, please read uh, Philippians chapter 4, which is the final chapter in that book. We'll be closing that book on Wednesday night. Please join us, those of you uh, who can by way of conference call and let us uh, enjoy our time together. Not only do we have Bible study, we also have meditation and prayer. So please join us for um, those celebrations as we come together on this week. All of you in the house who are celebrating birthday this week, will you please stand at this time? I said this month. Did I say week? I meant this month. Now we had some this past week, <laughs> but all the September birthdays, please stand. All right, let's sing happy birthday to our September month birthday people. <laughs> 
Let's sing together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. May God, may God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. And there are some of you who already had birthdays this past week and uh, in weeks coming up. So if you're having a party this coming week, let us know. We'll, we'll stop by and say hi. Why even bring a gift? You never know. Amen. Amen. Um, some one or two persons have approached me um, about the uh, the installation afternoon services relative to the presentation of gifts. Um, if you would like to uh, present gifts to me, my family, uh, you may do so at that time, that afternoon service, which begins at three on September the, uh, the 18th. So you can do that. That will be towards the end of uh, the service. So if you have uh, any gifts, whatever you want to present to uh, my family and myself, you can do it at that time. Let's continue to pray that we will have a successful day. As you already know, we have many people uh, who are coming uh, from out of town to be with us, to share with us in this wonderful celebration. And if there's any way you can help uh, Sister Connie uh, and others uh, through that whole day, because this is a a whole day affair, morning and afternoon. Please lend a hand, let them know that you're willing uh, to help and we will work together to make that day a success. Again, it is so good to see all of you here today. We certainly hope and pray that this service will be a blessing to your life because each time we come into the house of the Lord, we ought to come looking for a blessing, amen? amen. And I pray that on this day, you will receive the blessing that you are indeed looking for. At this time, our choir will come and lead us in our moments of music.
am a witness that God keeps on making a way for us even when there is no way. Do you remember that time when you were dealing with that situation and you thought you wouldn't make it out? But God stepped in and made a way out. And now look at you. You're in his house giving him the praise. That's because God knows how to make a way someone said out of no way. And he keeps doing it, not one time, but over and over and over again. He keeps on making a way. So we thank God for that reminder this morning from our choir and that God indeed is a way maker. Amen. As we go now into our moments uh, of prayer, let us remember uh, Sister Queen Powell. I spoke with her on yesterday. Uh, she is in, uh, still in rehab, but uh, she's doing well. Uh, she's doing well. She's feeling better. And uh, let's just keep her in prayer. Uh, let us also pray for uh, Sister Danielle Anderson and pray for her recovery. Uh, Danielle is a faithful member of this church when she can be here, but lately she has had some health challenges. So let's pray that God will be with her and her family again in this time of uh, sickness. The God who makes a way is the God who can also heal. You know, whatever our diseases are, we can bring it uh, to him. Let me ask special prayer requests for uh, the mother of Sister Swan Dunn. Her name is uh, Ann, uh, Ann Johnson. Uh, please keep her in prayer. Keep Suan in prayer. Uh, pray that God will give her the healing that she needs in this time of illness. Let's pray for one another. You know, as I always say, we, we, we look like we're doing well. We got a bright smile on our faces, but you just never know what's going on. And so if it's just a prayer that says, Lord, have mercy on my neighbor, that'll work. That will work. So pray for one another that God will meet us at the point of our need. He hears our prayer and he answers our prayer. When it gets rough, this is what you got to do. Ask the Savior to help. Oh, come for strengthen and keep. I know Jesus is willing to aid. This is what he'll do. He will carry. Oh, why don't you just ask? Oh, Father, we come to you this morning once more to say thank you for another day. God, we went to bed last night without the guarantees of waking up this morning. But because you love us so much and because you care for us so much, you kept us safe through the night. And right early this morning, you touched us with your finger of love and woke us up and got us up out of our beds. Oh, Father, we're grateful. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, God, for your provisions and your protection. 
Thank you for being a good God, a faithful God. Thank you for being our father, our friend, our companion, oh God, our creator. We thank you for being there when nobody else was there with us. God, we give you the praise. As we come together now, we lift up these names and other concerns that are being lifted at this time. Pray, God, that you will be with individuals and be with their situations. And pray, God, that you will bring about a resolution to these issues we're dealing with. We don't know how to resolve them. We don't know how to handle them. But one thing we do know, we know how to bring them to you. And every time we have brought them to you, oh God, you have solved those problems for us. We give you those who are sick right now. Those who are going through bereavement. Those who are discouraged because of the burdens of this life. We give them all to you right now. We pray, God, that you will make your presence made known in their situations. That they will know that once they receive the healing or the, 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 the joy or strength or whatever they receive, they'll know God is coming straight from you. So I pray, God, you help them. We pray you bless the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. Please continue, God, to help us to be the church that you're calling for in these last and evil days. Father, the days are evil. Everywhere we turn, there's violence. Everywhere we turn, there's someone uh, being killed, being robbed, and lives being destroyed. But God, you have called us to this ministry of reconciliation. You've called us, oh God, to this ministry of proclamation. So help us, God, to be the church that is sitting on this hill that cannot be hid. To let the world know that we're serving a true and a risen God. We ask, Lord, that you will bless this nation, the United States of America, bless its leadership. We pray, God, that you will bless all those who rule in power. Give them the sense, oh God, to know that without you, they're nothing. Let them know, God, that they have a responsibility to lead according to your will. And I pray, God, that you will bring this country back together, this country that is so torn apart. And not only the United States, God, will look around the world. In every corner of our world, oh God, there is conflict. We pray for peace. We pray, God, you bless the innocent who right now are in harm's way. Pray, Lord, you will cover them with your grace and your mercy. Please forgive us of our sins. Please have mercy on us, oh God, for our unrighteousness. God, we have done some things that were wrong. And we come to you to confess this morning and to ask you to have mercy upon us. Bless this service today. There are some, oh God, who have come today looking for an answer to their questions. There are some who have come with a burden upon their hearts and their minds. Lord, let this service be a time of release and relief. Let this be a time, oh God, when we can lay aside our burdens and raise our hands and give you the praise. Because God, you are worthy of all our praise. And Father, if there's one here today who has not yet given his or her life to you, to be saved. I pray God this will be their day when they will come asking, what must I do to be saved? Oh, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you for all you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for what you will do. Lead us now. Help us to follow you each day so that we can live our lives in such a manner that the world will know we're serving you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you for the answers you're going to give. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Let us all say together, amen. 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 At this time, we'll have our scripture reading by Reverend James Wright.
Good morning. morning. Our scripture will be found in Matthew's 28th chapter. I'll be reading from the King James Version, beginning at verse 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always even until the end of the world. The word of God for God's people. My brothers and sisters, we have once more entered into a school year. Uh, we don't know what this year is going to bring. But I'm glad that we serve a God who knows our past, our present, and our future. And because we know that he plants his footstep in all three dimensions of our lives, we know we can come to him and ask him to protect, to care for, to watch over our students, our children who are going back to school. Amen. We know not what the future holds, but after we have seen what has happened in this country this year, years before, and even what's happening around the world. I thought it wise for us as a church to bring our children, our students, before God and pray a special prayer of covering for them. We're living in troubled times. We're living in times where people feel that they can take life. Life that they did not create. We live in a time when someone can get a weapon and break into a school and snuff out innocent lives. Well, we have something we can do about it. We can go to God. Because God is bigger, God is more powerful than any weapon, any evil that may come our way. And I just believe, my brothers and sisters, when we present our children and our students to God and ask him to watch over them, I believe he'll do it. How he chooses to do so is up to him. But we as a church family, I thought it'd be good if we would take that step and say to God, hear our children. Deacon Stephen Yet uh, Saya is not only a deacon of this church, she's a school administrator. She comes, <laughs> she comes hand in hand with the situations that we, we hear about every day. And so I asked her if she would be the one to lead us in this prayer. Before she comes, let me ask all students and children who are here today going to school uh, this year will you please come and stand before us all our children i know we don't have many here today but come on harrison stand right there and then one us all or students come on you stand right there okay any others any others if you're if you're a college student that's fine you come on and stand with us. And for those of you who are watching by way of Facebook or live stream, we ask you also to join us in prayer because you also have children who are about to go back to school. Let us trust God today to cover our children. Take and say uh, We thank you. We honor your name because you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our children here at West Highsville Baptist Church. 
and we thank you for our children all over the DMV and all over the world. Father God, first we lift up their academics to you as they walk into those buildings on Tuesday. Father God, we ask you to give them wisdom. Open their understanding. Father, Father God, all of those who have uh, disabilities, yes. all of those who have been labeled by man, Father God, you have not labeled them. So, Father God, we lift them up to you. We ask you to destroy every label yes. Yes. that has been placed on their lives. Father, we ask you to destroy every uh, uh, um, hindrance to their education. We ask you to remove every stumbling block of the enemy in their way concerning their academics. Father God, we ask you to destroy ADHD. We ask you to destroy ADD. Father God, we ask you to destroy every learning disability. Because nothing is impossible for you. And for you, nothing is difficult. Yes. Father, we lift them up to you. Do let your will be done in their lives and not the will of the enemy. Yes. Father, I ask you to go into every classroom. Mm. Every classroom, Father God, all over the DMV. Destroy every stumbling block in these kids' way, Lord Jesus, that will hinder their education. Mm. We ask you to destroy dependency on drugs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father God. Father God, we ask you to destroy gangs. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. We lift these children up to you. Please. We thank you for the academics this school year. We thank you for the academics success this 2022-2023 school year. Mm -hmm. Father God, next we lift up their protection to yes, you. Lord. Yes. Oh, Jehovah. Please. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Yes, sir. Be their banner. Oh, Father God, when the enemy comes against them like a flaw, lift up your standard against the enemy. Yes, Father God, we ask you to be present in every school. Please. Let your angels stand guard at yes, every sir. portal of entry. Father God, we ask you to destroy every plan of the enemy for school violence this school year. We ask you to destroy every plan of the enemy for school violence. Wherever they are gathering, yes. Father God, we send Holy Ghost fire to destroy every gathering. Because you say, if the gathering is not of you, it will be in vain. Let their gatherings be in vain, Father God. Oh, hallelujah to your name. Father God, next we lift up provision for them, yes, oh God. Yes. Father God, provide for them. Provide for every household, Father God. Everything that they need for their education, Father God, we ask you to provide. Everything that they need for their lives, their, their livelihood, we ask you to provide. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this school year. We thank you that your will will be done in this school year and not the will of the enemy. Mm. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you every praise. We thank you for these children, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I cover them with your blood. I cover them, Father God. I cover them with your blood. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Children, you can go back to your seats. And to the parents of these children and students, we want you to know that we as a church family, we got your back. If there's anything we can do to help you along this journey, let us know. Now, I always emphasize that word family because that's who we are. We are the family of God. You are my brothers and sisters. We're in this thing together. Uh, a few days ago, I was thinking about what happened in, in Texas. And right opposite uh, our house in Nottingham, there is a school bus stop. The kids come together with their parents, grandparents, and to wait for the bus. And so as I walked to the window, 
and I saw those children gathering. I couldn't help but pray. Mm. So if you're out and about and you see some <clears throat> children or some students moving about, even if you drive past the school, say a prayer. <laughs> Just say a prayer and God will answer that prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to ask prayer uh, on a personal note for my daughter who is here today, Miss Yemma. Uh, <laughs> She's going she to get me. <laughs> uh, some of you were on the prayer call uh, the other day when I asked for prayer for her. She has uh, now uh, relocated to New York City. And uh, she is uh, doing well. We praise God for her. But at the same time, we pray for God's protection. Yes. Uh, she, uh, she's there by herself. And, and that means uh, mommy and daddy uh, walking throughout the house each day saying, Lord, my baby, Lord, my baby, <laughs> Lord, my baby. Uh, but uh, we're so proud of her and proud of all the young people who have done well. And like I said the other day, we knew this day would come, uh, you know, when they would have to take wings and fly away. And, uh, but thank God she's not over in Timbuktu somewhere. I can get in my car and drive <laughs> to New York and see her. But I just pray that uh, all will be well with you, Yemma. We pray God's blessings upon you. Uh, she has been such a, a blessing. Uh, not only to uh, her parents, but the entire family. And uh, we pray God's favor upon her. And again, not only her, but all of you, young people, uh, keep going at it. Doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. And God will bless you. Amen? Amen. 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 So the choir is going to come and lift our spirits with music. And after they do that, I'll come back and do some preaching. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. for this morning. Amen. God woke you up this morning. Yeah. Another song we sing all the time. I'm so grateful. Yes. Lord, you are my strong tower. I can call on your name anytime, anytime. You're my strength, you're my God. You always, always by my side. I'm so grateful. Anytime, anytime, you're my strength, you're my guide, you always, always by my side, I'm so grateful for who, who you are. He 
is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. Help me say it. Yeah.
was sitting there listening to that song, I started thinking about all that God has done uh, for me, and I couldn't help but just whisper in my own ear. Well, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Oh, you brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Mighty long way. Well, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. I, I just had to give that to him. Uh, because when I think of all that he has done for me, uh, he deserves all the praise. And I'm sure you can also say that he has brought you from a mighty long way. Oh, when you think about where you were just a few years ago, and people thought you wouldn't make it this far. But the reason you're here is because God brought you. Picked you up where you were, brought you to where you are right now. I think you ought to give him the praise. Because he has been good to us. And all of us know our own stories. <laughs> you know, you can't tell everybody, but <laughs> we know our own stories. That's between me and Jesus. Right. And when you know how far he's brought you, every now and then. You just got to sit back and say, Lord, I thank you for bringing me a mighty long way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Reverend Wright uh, read our passage of scripture for this morning's message from uh, Matthew 28. Uh, he read from verses 16 to 20. I want to read from, from verses 18 to 20, and then we will uh, walk through the rest of the passage. Matthew 28, beginning at verse 18 and concluding at verse 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I want to preach about unfinished business. Unfinished business. One of the most significant and impactful scriptures given to the Christian church is the passage we have as our text for today's sermon. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, has been historically referred to as the Great Commission. This commission was given by Jesus to his disciples following his resurrection and before his ascension into heaven. The goal of the Great Commission was in the first century as it is in the 21st century century and that goal is to teach and preach the gospel and make disciples for Jesus. Amen. Though this command was given first to disciples over 2,000 years ago, it remains relevant today 
Because people are lost in their sins and aside from Jesus, they have no other way to obtain salvation and everlasting life. People will hear about Jesus and the gifts he brings when we as Christians declare the gospel. And if ever there were a time in our community, in our country, and in this world that the, the, that, that, that the gospel needs to be preached, that time is now. If ever there were a time when people need to hear about Jesus, the time is now. You know, some Christians love to talk. They talk about everything. They talk about the weather. They talk about politics and politicians. They talk about their favorite celebrities. They talk about who's seeing who. They talk about uh, everybody's business but their own. Well, my brothers and sisters, if we are going to talk like this, then let me recommend a life-changing topic for discussion. Since we like to talk, let me recommend something. Can we talk about Jesus? Someone is thinking about giving up on life because everything they have tried has failed. Let's tell them about Jesus. Someone is sick and can't get well. Let's tell them about Jesus. Someone got a stack of bills that need to be paid and they have no money to pay their bills. Let's tell them about Jesus. Someone has good life insurance, but no heavenly assurance. Let's tell them about Jesus. Jesus offers peace. Jesus offers love. Jesus offers joy. And yes, Jesus offers abundant and eternal life. Can we take a moment and just acknowledge the fact that we need to talk to somebody about Jesus? Jesus is telling us today that we need to be constantly engaged in the ministries of evangelism and mission. Those are two very essential functions of the church. We need to be in the business of sharing the gospel. And since we know that that, that there are people who are living and dying without salvation, that means, my brothers and sisters, we still have a job to do. That means, West Hyattsville, we have some unfinished business. Tell somebody about Jesus. Following Jesus' resurrection and the spreading of the exciting news that he had indeed risen from the dead, his disciples went into Galilee to meet him as he had instructed. In Matthew chapter 28, 16 and 17, we read that the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. When they saw him, they worshipped him. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Oh, but at the end of that verse, we see some words. It says, but some doubt it. You have one group worshipping him. But in the midst of the worshipers, there were some who were still doubting. Now, now my brothers and sisters, don't be too hard uh, on the crowd who doubted because their doubting was not a sign of disbelief in Jesus as the Messiah. The word doubted in the text means that they were wavering. It means they were vacillating between that belief. It means they were moving from one opinion to the other. Is this the real physical Jesus or are we looking at a ghost? If you remember in Matthew chapter 14, when when, when the disciples were out on the sea, they saw Jesus approaching them. And what was he doing? He was walking on the water. And you remember, they got scared. They were afraid because they thought he was a ghost. And he told them, no, don't be afraid. It is I. Jesus and Peter walked to him on the water so they were afraid because they saw Jesus and some doubted when these decide these doubting disciples saw Jesus after the resurrection 
that doubtfulness grew out of the fact that they had just seen Jesus die Amen. and buried in a tomb. And now here he is standing before them just like he was and he's talking to them and in the mind they're saying this cannot be. Is this real or is this an apparition? I got to tell you the truth, my brothers and sisters, if I were in that group, you ain't got to call me Doubting Thomas. You call me Running Thomas. Because especially if I just saw someone die just the other day, and now here he is. Even though he, he told them that he was the Messiah, but in the mind they're saying, wait a minute. Something wrong with this picture. A few weeks ago I was here in the office studying and uh, as usual, when I'm here, most times, I'm here by myself, me and Jesus. But this, on this particular day, I was in the office studying, and I heard the organ play. As far as I know, I was the only one here. But I heard the organ playing. So I said, okay. <laughs> I was like, Moses, I got to see this. <laughs> so I crept <laughs> out of the office. It came, and Lord, it was George Dix. I said, man, don't scare me like that. Next time you come to the church, at least let me know you're, <laughs> you're here. But in my mind, there was no one here. So this is what's happening in their minds. Jesus is not real. He appears to be real, but they were wavering. Like I was on that day. Is there someone in the, in the sanctuary? Or not? Thank God it was George. Some doubt it. But in verse 18 of our text, Jesus put an end to their doubting. He arrested their wandering and wavering minds. And he did this in verse 18. Now, before I read verse 18, I got to tell you something. To appreciate the meaning and effectiveness of the Great Commission, always start reading verse 18. I know we often talk about the Great Commission and we read Matthew 28, 19, and 20, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But to understand what makes the Great Commission work, start with verse 18. Because in the presence of disciples with their doubting and wavering minds and hearts, Jesus made a declaration. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I know you're doubting, so I got to tell you right now, to clear out your doubt, all power is given to me. In heaven and in earth, the word power, exousia from the Greek, in it, it means authority. It means the, the right and the power to make things happen. So since they were doubting, Jesus had to tell them, I've got power in this world and beyond this world. I have saving power. I have healing power. I have life sustaining power. I have death conquering power. And yes, I have resurrection power. All power, all authority is given to me in heaven Amen. and in earth. So Jesus told them, I got the power. So the disciples, now that they knew, that Jesus got the power and Jesus told them he has the power. Jesus says to them, this is what I'm commanding you to do. Now that you know I've got this power, here it is in verse 19. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations. The word teach means to go and make disciples. Don't make disciples to follow you. Make disciples to follow Jesus. One of the challenges of the 21st century church is that is the, the audacity of Christian leaders who manipulate people into becoming their own personal disciples. Jesus called us to make disciples for him and not for ourselves. 
As we see in John chapter 3, verse 30, John, because they thought that John was the Messiah, John said, no, I'm not. John said, he must increase. He, meaning Jesus, he must increase and I must decrease. It's about Jesus, it's not about me. Here's a little reminder, brother pastor, reverend, bishop, apostle, prophet, prophetess, potentate, whatever you call yourself. Our job is to lift Jesus up for all the world to see. He said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, what will he do? I will draw all men unto me. Who is a disciple? A disciple is a learner. A disciple is a student. A disciple is a follower. These 11 disciples of Jesus are given a commission to, to go forth and evangelize to be Jesus' ambassadors and to make more disciples for him. As I said at the beginning of the sermon, this commission was given over 2,000 years ago. But West Highest Hill, it applies to us today. We who have been saved by Jesus, we who are his disciples and his followers, we have the spiritual responsibility to go forth and invite others to be learners, students, and followers of Jesus. Amen. Well, Jesus, now that you told us to do, where do you want us to go? Where do we go to make disciples? Stay in verse 19. He says, go to all nations and make disciples. The word nations in the text from the Greek ethnos means ethnic. It means races of people. It means all kinds of people. He says, make disciples of all ethnicities, all people. You cannot discriminate when it comes to who you preach to. You cannot make any distinction when it comes to how you share the gospel. Jesus says, tell everybody. Amen. Amen. One passage that really gives a blueprint regarding where we should go is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts. Amen. These words have significance because the way Jesus tells them, there is a progression yeah. on the how we're going to get the gospel out. Jerusalem, mm -hmm. Jerusalem is home. That's where they lived. That's where Jesus died. Jerusalem is a, 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 an area that they are familiar with. Amen. Judea is their neighbors. Yeah. Start at home and then start going forward. Samaria is a place where Jews were not welcome. Because the Jews and the, and the Samaritans did not have dealing. You remember the woman at the well? When, when, when Jesus, I talked to her and she said, why are you talking to me? Knowing that Jews and Samaritans have no dealing. Start at home, go to your neighbors. Thirdly, go to your haters and tell them about Jesus. And then he said, the uttermost parts of the earth, tell the gospel everywhere. That's right, Pastor. That's right. This commission from Jesus does not discriminate Amen. against anyone because of what they look like. Because of what they sound like. Because of how they walk. How they think. Tell the gospel. Lives need to be saved. The disciples were commissioned to teach. But they were also commissioned and authorized to baptize disciples. He says also in verse 19. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What we did last week. The choice to be publicly baptized is evidence that someone has believed in Jesus and made a commitment to follow him. 
The disciples were given the authority to baptize that person in the name of God, declaring that person's entry into the family of God. This practice of baptism uh, 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 challenged the mind of the average Jew because in Jewish culture or in Judaism, the, the, the practice that was used to identify your agreement or connection with God's covenant was a practice called circumcision. So, so my brothers and sisters understand that they were given the, the power, the commission to teach, but also to baptize. Now let us be reminded, we do not get saved by baptism. Amen. 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 A lot of people believe that. Baptism does not save us. We are not baptized to get saved. We are baptized because Amen. we are saved. What you saw last week with these candidates was a public profession telling the world that I am baptized or I am saved by Jesus. And by being baptized, they identified with him and they were welcomed into the family. Romans 10, 9 reads, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. That's it. If you confess Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him, that is what saves you. Be careful as people begin to add various uh, requirements, various uh, 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 rules and regulations. Jesus said, if you just believe in me, Believe that God has sent me, accept me as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. In verse 20 of the Great Commission, Jesus, Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. The word teach at the opening of verse 19 means to make new disciples. But this word teaching in verse 20 means to instruct new disciples. What should we teach them, Jesus? Teach them everything I taught you. Don't teach them what you feel like teaching them. Don't teach them some synthetic theology. Don't teach them stuff that sounds popular and, and good and catchy. Don't teach them a bunch of cliches. Uh, so, so they can be able to recite when they get to church or in the Christian circle. No, no, no. teach them what I taught you. Amen. And what did Jesus teach them? Teach them lessons about salvation. Teach them lessons I taught you about loving God. Teach them lessons I taught you about loving each other. Teach them lessons I taught you about loving your enemies. Teach them lessons I taught you about forgiving one another. Teach them lessons I taught you about treating each other the way you want to be treated. Treat them. Teach them right. Amen. Amen. And then Jesus told them, when you make disciples and you baptize them uh -huh. and you instruct these disciples, know this, you will not be alone. He says, and lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. Don't take, for those of you who have the King James Version, don't take that word lo for granted. There's two letters, mm -hmm. L-O. Yeah. I know if you have other translations, it'll have another word in there. But that word, lo, mm -hmm. add two letters to it to understand it. L-O, then add OK. And what do you get? Look. It means see. Mm -hmm. It means behold. When he says to them, lo, see, behold, I am with you. The reason why this was, was going to be a challenge is because two things. First of all, understand that these disciples were living in a hostile environment. Yeah. 
They didn't want, nobody want to hear about Jesus. You get up there and start talking about Jesus, you get killed. But this is the environment and the culture that they were living in. But the certain thing here is this. Jesus is about to leave them. But yet he says, I'll be with you. What is the basis of that? It is the basis, uh, it's based upon the fact that Jesus had promised them a comforter. He had promised them the Holy Spirit. In fact, again, if you go back to, to Acts chapter 1, you will see where the promise of the Spirit is there. He says, as you're going to carry out this commission, you don't have to worry, I'll be there with you. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. It's a wonderful thing to know that Jesus is by your side. Amen. There are many evils happening around us today. But this lets us know that the world is coming to an end. But not only that, it also lets us know that the world has not yet ended. Jesus says to them in, 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 in Matthew, I'm sorry, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, he said, and this kingdom of, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. My brothers and sisters, since we know that this world is coming to an end, we need to acknowledge that we have some unfinished business. We need to tell the world about Jesus. This is our commission. This is our charge. Charles Wesley put it best when he wrote these words, a charge to keep. I have a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. We have some unfinished business. What is it? Telling the world about Jesus. And here's the thing, my brothers and sisters, by doing that, we hold in our hands, in our hearts, something that changes lives. But not just change lives, something that spares lives. Because right now, a person who you know who is living life without Jesus is headed towards eternal separation from God. But you can play a part in stopping them. How? By telling them about Jesus. How do we do this? Talk to them, let them know. The road you're going down is the wrong road. But here is the right road. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, we can do many things here at West Highestville. Sing, shout, preach, fellowship, have a great time in the Lord. But after we leave here, after we've enjoyed the presence of the Lord and we walk out there yes, into a sinful world mm -hmm. we go to make disciples remember it starts at home yeah. one of the greatest privileges I've ever had in my life was leading my daughter to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And then having, like I was pastoring in Tennessee at the time, having the privilege to baptize her in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I know right now she's saved. What about home with you, Jerusalem? But don't stop there. Go and look at what's happening in Judea, your neighbors. Don't stop there. Go to Samaria, the folk who don't even like you. 
And don't stop there. But go to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's what we are called to do. My brothers and sisters, are we working on our unfinished business? Or are we just enjoying the business of coming together, having a good time going home and going to bed? We are called to more than that. Remember, these were only 11 disciples. But after Jesus left, look at what he did through 11 disciples who went out into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the world and preached the gospel. And now and today, Christianity is all around the world. What about you? What about me? Recently, I had an opportunity to meet some individuals from around the world at the Lycari Foreign Mission Convention, where Reverend Dunn and I and Connie and others went for a week. And we met people from Guyana, from Haiti, Nigeria, uh, Jamaica, other parts of the world who came together to make some reports, let us know what's happening in their countries. And yes, the gospel is being spread. We ought to be glad, West Highestville, that we are playing a part Amen. in making that happen because we are a part of the convention. But here's the thing, the convention is over. Everybody's gone home. Now it's up to you and me to go out there and tell someone about Jesus. Will you do that? Will you, you don't have to answer to me. You can answer to Jesus. Let's go and lift him up for all the world to see. So if someone is asking the question, how can I be saved? You will have the answer to give on to them. And if you're here this morning, this afternoon, right now, if you're here and you have not been saved, you have some unfinished business. Because now is the time for you to give your life to Jesus. Now is the time for you to be saved. And you don't have to do anything else but ask him to come into your heart. To believe that he is the son of God. And as the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. The question is, do you want to be saved? And do you want to do it now? We extend this invitation to you. And just in case you're thinking, Oh, I can do it next Sunday. Oh, I can do it next week, next month. I'll wait for the new year. Listen. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is all you have. As right now you are breathing, this is your opportunity do not put off to tomorrow what you can do today we open the doors of the church and extend this invitation to you to discipleship if you're here today and you are already saved and would like to become a member of the west high israel baptist church you may also come at this time as we sing together lift him up because that's what we need to do lift him up Lift him up till he speaks. Till he speaks from eternity. Oh, if I, if I be lifted up from here, I'll draw men unto me. Come on, y'all, lift him up. Oh.
this service and you hear the Lord talking to you, respond. Oh, respond to him. Give him your life today. Be saved. Not just now. Be saved forevermore. If you're watching by way of Facebook or live stream or you're listening and you know that you have not given your life to Jesus. Now is the time right where you are. Life is short. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. If he should call your name tonight. You want to be ready to go home with Jesus. Take him today. He's calling out to you right now. Be saved today. And not only today, but forevermore. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise for his word. <laughs> and we pray that this message has gone forth to someone, first of all to us, who need to be about the master's business. But to someone who has not yet given his or her life to Jesus. I'm glad I did. You're glad you did. But there are others who also need to come into the family. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are there any first time visitors with us today? Any first time visitors? Please stand and tell us who you are. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rhoda. And Rhoda is from Tanzania. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Please come back and see us again. Amen. Amen. Uh, my brothers and sisters, let us now prepare to uh, bring our gifts unto the Lord. We thank God for giving us what he has given us, and he has instructed us to bring back to him a portion of what he has blessed us with. This is first Sunday, which means we're also going to lift our benevolent offering. One of our deacons will have the basket for our benevolent offering. Please uh, help us as we prepare to help others and maybe even help you in times of need. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this offering that is about to be lifted. We thank you, O oh God, for the hands that have given it. We ask now, God, that you will, you will multiply these gifts, O oh God, and use them in kingdom building. This is our prayer, we pray in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together. Amen.
you so much for what you have given on today. May God bless you for your obedience as you continue to serve him, even with your gifts. Before we move into our time of the Lord's Supper, we have a very special moment that I think every church can celebrate. And today we are extending the right hand of fellowship and giving a heartfelt welcome to four new members. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Deacon Dorothy Stencil if she will come and extend this and give them um, the information that they need. Praise God. Uh, Pastor Rainsbury and members of West Highsville Baptist Church, it is my pleasure on behalf of the membership ministry is to introduce you to four people that Reverend Boston and myself had the opportunity to do new members orientation. So at this time, I would like to present to you all four new members of West Highsville Baptist Church. Uh, we stand as I call your name, Pastor Stevenson. Amen. 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 They have all successfully completed new members orientation and in, on behalf of Marilyn Bostick, it's a pleasure for me to introduce you to these members as new members of West Highsville Baptist Church. Amen. Welcome. To our new members, as I've said, when you joined and came down and expressed your desire to be a part of us, you're not just members here, you are part of our family now. But not only that, we also ask you to come and get involved in the work because everyone here in the family of the West Heisman Baptist Church, we do the best we can to do the work that God has assigned to us. Each of you have talents and abilities that you can contribute to the kingdom of God, and you do so by helping us here at the West Highestville Baptist Church. We are so glad that you are a part of us. We are uh, looking forward to great things that God is going to do through you to bless us here at West Highestville. And we pray that your spiritual growth will be enhanced. If there's anything we can do as a church family to help you along that way, please, be, please feel free to say that to us. I am your pastor. If you need me, you know you can call me. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to ask now the deacons will come and extend the right hand of fellowship. And following that, we'll go into our time of Lord's Supper. Come on, God. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise. And for those of you who are already members uh, following our service today, please come and welcome them also into our church. And uh, ministry leaders, you have four new workers here, so tell them what you need them to do. <laughs> Put them to work, okay? Amen. You can have your seats. Come on, let's praise God.
My brothers and sisters, we have now come to this moment in our service when we celebrate the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, an example left to us by Jesus himself. That as we partake of these elements and participate in this ceremony, that we will indeed remember his death, burial, and resurrection. We thank God for what he has done for us. And we pray that as we take this supper today, that we will keep our focus on him. Because this is about Jesus. This is about his sacrifice. And today, we remember that sacrifice. I'm going to ask now that Reverend James Wright will lead us in our responsive reading. We'll read responsively. As we come to the Lord's table, let us come with a spirit of humility and penitence. Let us examine ourselves, our thoughts, our actions, our motives, and our attitudes toward others. Help us to remember our responsibility to our families and our neighbors, our stewardship, to you and to the work you have given to our hands. As we eat the bread which represents Christ's body, which is the true and living bread, open our eyes to recognize the intimacy that you yearn to share with us. Since Christ's blood shared for us, we thank you for the new covenant, love ye one another, which is written on our hearts. Let us rejoice because our names are written in heaven. May this Lord's Supper energize every area of our lives and enable us to transcend our circumstances, inadequacies, inadequacies and our enemies. We praise you, O God, who make us your own people through the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Abide in us, Savior and Redeemer. Fill us with life-giving power of your Spirit, now and forever. Let us pray. God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, O God, for sending your only begotten Son, to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Such a sacrifice, O oh God, we did not deserve. But because of your love, your mercy, and your grace, you gave up your only Son to die for us. And so, God, as we approach this moment of celebration of this ordinance, we ask, God, that you will touch our hearts and our minds so that we will approach this ceremony with gratitude, with appreciation, because of what you have done for us. Indeed, we know, God, that if it had not been for Jesus, that we would not be here on today. Bless now these elements and pray, God, that the meaning of these elements, O oh Lord, will continue to remind us of your love for all mankind. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he break it he gave thanks and said take eat this is my body 
which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took up the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is this cup is the new testament of my blood. Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he come. Let us now share in the Lord.
those who are saved, remember what I did. Each time you participate in this ordinance, just remember. And prayerfully, by remembering it, it will bring us even closer to Him and to praise Him for what He did on an old rugged cross, mm -hmm. on a hill called mm -hmm. Catholic. Mm -hmm. This beautiful, nice laid out. This is the result of suffering. This is the result of pain. So when we take it, let us be grateful. It should have been us. But Jesus said, no. I will take on the entire sin of the world. And he died. Don't we thank God? He didn't say that. now for this time of worship. We thank you for this time of praise. We thank you, God, for what we have heard from your word. We ask now, God, you give us the strength, give us the zeal. Give us the fervor, O oh God, to go forth and tell the world about Jesus. We know that we're living in a dying world, but even in a dying world, you can still give life to those right now who face eternal separation from us. Help us, O oh God, to give them this job so one day we can say that we were able to complete our unfinished business. Lord, with us as we go through this week, we do not know what lies ahead of us, but God, you do. We ask God that even as we step out of these doors, Walk with us, talk with us each day. Lead yes. us and guide us. Yes. And if it be your will, bring us back together again next Sunday as we shall come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for these new members you have added to our church. Yes. We yes. pray, God, that you will bless their lives. I pray, God, you will cover them, oh God, and help them to come in and get busy doing your work which you have assigned to them. And then help us as a church family to embrace them and let them know you are now a part, not only of the family of God, but also the family of the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. Lead us and guide us now as we go. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in our hearts from now henceforth and forevermore. Everybody sing amen. Everybody singing. 
Amen. Amen. Come shake the hands of our new members. Oh, yeah. Everybody say. Yes, yes.